Let's go to the Northern Territory now because we have this exclu exclusive report at the top of the program from Matt Cunningham about the data from the Alice Springs Hospital since the drinking restrictions were reimposed. Let's go to Independent now, Robin Lamley. Uh, you will know her well. We'd love to have you back on the program, Robin. Thanks so much. Uh, basically, this data shows that um, alcohol-related admissions to hospital in Alice are down. What do you make of it? Well, they're down because the Stronger Futures alcohol bans uh, that were in place for many, many years, more than 15 years, that were lifted in July of last year, were reinstated uh, just recently. And that's why there's been a reduction in emergency department presentations at the Alice Springs Hospital. We've got a very small community in Alice Springs and the emergency department at our hospital is at the coalface mm -hmm. and they see exactly what's going on in terms of violence and crime and obviously uh, presentations around health issues. Yeah, because the anecdotal evidence is that uh, there's violent crime still every night. Um, there may not be hospital presentations, but it's still happening. Well, exactly. Uh, just because there's been a reduction doesn't mean it's gone away. And just over the last week, we've seen an escalation again in violence in our town. But uh, the, what they see at the emergency de department at the hospital really is a, it provides a really good indication of just what's going on at the, in the, at the grassroots in our community. I remember years ago we had a, a major problem with pancreatitis, uh, mm. mainly caused by the very high consumption of fortified wines. Those fortified wines were taken off the shelf. Uh, you can only access a bottle of port after 6pm mm. in Alice Springs and that's been the case for probably the best part of 20 years and pancreatitis disappeared in the Alice Springs community. So what they see is so important and such a clear reflection of what's going on in our town. And I'd imagine that they're still run off their feet. Don't forget that our, our health services right across the Northern Territory are acutely understaffed. We yep. cannot get health professionals here. We have a shortage of nurses and doctors. So our EDs are run off their feet, uh, not just because of the short, they're being short staffed, but because uh, alcohol is still a major issue right throughout the Territory, but always in Alice Springs. Yeah, absolutely. What about the bail laws? They'll pass the Parliament today. Is it enough? Of course it's not enough. When you take your eye off the ball and neglect uh, or choose to ignore that there's a crime problem for many, many years, uh, in our case in Alice Springs, five, six years, uh, you see an escalation in crime. Uh, tweaking a few laws isn't going to make a huge amount of difference. It is significant. Uh, this is another backflip from the Files Labor government. They are on the hop. They're under enormous pressure in the community to look like they're doing something. This is indeed a step in the right direction. They say that uh, the, it will come into effect, these, these changes to the bail laws, immediately. But it will not be anywhere near mm. enough to change the behaviour of... Uh, uh, of people that are committing these heinous, horrible, uh, disrespectful crimes right across the Northern Territory. It will take many, many years to reverse the damage of years of, uh, of neglect and mismanagement and, and just, inaction. Yeah, and Robin, just quickly, I'm, I'm so um, interested to read this piece that you wrote in the paper about detention facilities, the headline, detention facilities stuck in a time warp. Just quickly, take us through the crux of what you saw. I've been going out to the Alice Springs Youth Detention for years uh, as, a, as an official visitor, as a Member of Parliament. I've been around the traps for quite some time. I went out there recently. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, staggering to see that where the kids are being housed, where they're being fed, where they're being educated was exactly the same as what it was 10 years ago. Mm. And right next door they've, they've been building this $12 million new, basically an administration facility. I mean, there's been no change. Uh, despite a $70 million Royal Commission into juvenile detention in the Northern Territory, uh, no change on the ground. Kids are still being locked up in, um, in conditions that uh, were called inappropriate and uh, substandard years ago. Yeah. Uh, the, the hypocrisy of this government is staggering. They really are conflicted. They don't know what they're doing. They're flip-flopping all over the place. They're under enormous public pressure for good reason and um, the place is really 
uh, not been managed well for a very long time and people can see it very clearly now. Robin, thanks so much for your time as always. We'll talk soon. Thank you.